Hey guys, welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. Today, I'm gonna to be transferring a New England IPA into a keg with it limiting as much oxygenation as possible, okay? So I've kind of concocted a uh, piece of equipment that's gonna help us do either a kind of a truly, a truly closed transfer between the carboy and the keg, or in this case, we're gonna be doing it where it's kind of limiting the amount of oxygen in which the uh, beer will touch the uh, any type of air or oxygen. I have cold crashed my New England IPA. It is sitting at about 36 degrees right now. I'm gonna pull it out of my fermentation chamber. We're gonna put on this device and I'll walk you through it. But essentially what it's gonna do is it's gonna have a racking cane that's hooked into a hose that will hook into the liquid or beer uh, port of the keg. And then on the other side, we're just gonna have the gas um, connection open. So when the beer fills up, the CO2 that's already in the keg, which I've cleaned, sanitized, and filled with CO2, will exit, the beer will enter, and then the uh, contraption that I have made will uh, allow the beer to be pulled out of the carboy without touching any sort of oxygen at all. So I'll, I'll explain uh, what that looks like and, and how to make it. Uh, if you have a traditional carboy, with a small neck, they actually make a cap for that. And I'll throw, throw a picture of that up now. And this will help you um, create this if you have a smaller neck one. I don't have that, I have a big mouth bubbler. They do make a dual port uh, lid, which uh, you can use to do this in a different way. But I didn't have that and I didn't have time to order one and have it in, which I probably will order one in the future. So instead, I uh, actually just drilled two holes into a standard bung that fits on the top. I'm gonna to go through all of that next and we'll start the transfer. All right, we've pulled out the beer. It is sitting on top of my fermentation chamber. I'm gonna be transferring it to this clean, sanitized and uh, CO2 filled keg here in just a moment. Um, as you may remember, if you watched the previous video, this is the cold crash guardian that's on top of it here. This actually helped prevent any suck back of oxygen as it was cooling and cold crashing. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, I'd recommend doing that. That also helps with the New England IPAs. All right, let me show you guys what I have here. I have a single bung and it's got two pieces of equipment coming out. One is a racking cane, which will go down into the beer to pull the beer out. The other is a tube that's connect to a HEPA filter inline filter, okay? This will allow me to push either CO2 and in our case, I'm actually gonna blow into this and uh, it will keep any nasties from going into the beer uh, while it is transferring. But then once the transfer process starts, gravity will do the rest of the work. All right, in order to eliminate any of the air that's inside of this uh, hose and all that, and there's a little bit of sanitizer left in it, I'm actually gonna be hooking it up to my gas line that I have in the uh, fridge here. And it's actually gonna push out any of the leftover sanitizer, as you see, that's coming out of this. Make sure that's tightened down as well. And it's gonna purge any oxygen out of the line and the rest of the keg. We don't want pressure in the keg when we're doing this because we want the oxygen to be able to free flow back out of it. So we're gonna put this gas line uh, port back on it. And this will allow CO2 to exit out of here after we start the process. So now we have a line that is that has no air in it at all. I should have all CO2. We're going to put this down inside of the beer carefully. I'm going to press this down. On top of the beer. And seat the lid if I can. Not wet, so I'm gonna have to spray a little bit of san sanitizer on it, probably. And now what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this keg away so it can create a straight line to the. Uh, to the keg, and I'm going to blow 
into this to start the siphon. Now, the beer should be flowing and letting air out of the CO2 port onto the keg and uh, flowing out the outline. And you can tell that's happening by the level of the beer actually lowering. In this case, this cap doesn't fit great on here, so I'm actually holding it in place to make sure that we still have the pressure enough to continue for the, the beer below, uh, flowing. Um, what you could do is actually hook up CO2 to this as well, and that would press the um, CO2 into the container, into your fermenter, and then push the, the beer out as well. In this case, I'm not super worried about the oxygen that I blew in uh, through the tube because the CO2 that's in the fermenter already will kind of create a blanket over the top of the beer. And then the air that I blew in here will stay on top. And so it really shouldn't be touching the beer all that much. And if it is, it's a very limited amount. But if you're worried about that, you can definitely do the CO2 uh, and press it into that hose. And, uh, I just said about two to three PSI. Um, you can either do that continuously at least, or at least to start it. But if you take it off, it will of course suck oxygen in. So right now the beer is transferring and we'll allow that to get down. Once it does, we'll be able to uh, push the racking cane down a little bit further and make sure we're getting the rest of our beer out of the bottom there. So now our beer is transferring um, through the line from the uh, fermenter, the carboy into this keg. And you can see actually there's a line kind of forming right here on the keg. That's the cold beer coming into the, the keg. And so you can kind of see how full the keg is because it'll actually start sweating. Um, in this case, we're in my garage, it's pretty warm. And so uh, you may not be able to see this as clearly if you were inside of a house, but I have both the, um, the uh, uh, deal open here that helps it breathe. And then also the gas line connected, which also will push out the CO2 that was left in the keg. And so there should be no oxygen um, that's coming from the keg. In this case, it would just be uh, the, the beer hitting CO2. So it should help limit the oxygen contact. All right, as you can tell, we're getting kind of low on the fermenter. We should be finishing up here pretty soon. What I'm gonna actually do, just like we did in the transferring to a secondary video, is actually tilt this up a little bit to get the last little bit um, of, the, of the beer. But it's really important with New England IPAs to limit the amount of hop resin and yeast, so you don't really wanna disturb that that much. I'd rather sacrifice a little beer and have the rest of the keg be uh, quality beer in there with not a lot of hop resin, or else you can get hot burn uh, and other things in your beer, which is more of like an astringent uh, kind of burn taste that you don't want in your New England IPAs. All right, last but not least, we are now uh, ready. Uh, this is now closed. I'm gonna go ahead and close the, the valve here. I'm gonna hook up the gas for inside of the, the uh, kegerator, turn that on. And then just in case there was a little bit of air that might have got in there somehow, we're going to bleed this like we normally would. But again, that should be all CO2 in there. And then we're going to let this force carb. Um, I'm actually going to put it on about 30 pounds uh, pressure for a couple of days. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video on how to do a closed transfer, and in our case, kind of a semi-closed transfer to limit oxygen from your cold crash into your keg. So if you have any questions, please put them down in the uh, comment section below. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, the idea of this channel is to help people become better brewers. And with that, cheers and happy brewing.